A lot of students will ask on any given Monday, is it Modeling Monday today? You're not wearing the shirt. No, not Modeling Monday today. So I mean, I'm seeing particularly at the middle school level a lot of enthusiasm for Modeling Monday. They really are having fun with the open-endedness of math and seeing that it's not just in a textbook. It's someplace around them, everywhere around them in their world. Comparing the two Modeling Monday questions, this time the students felt better about it because they could get a number answer. This one actually has well, this a one, definite answer. Yeah, this has, this has like a formula answer. The other one was just like, like your interpretation. It could be yeah. many different answers. I like it a lot more because I said, it really like bugged me that I couldn't find an answer last time and like this time I know I could be right. With the other one, we don't know like for sure what like Pretty much any answer could have been correct. I think that there's a lot of answers and it's really hard to just choose one, but I think there'll be a just one straight on answer. I like this one much more because it's not as theoretical and like with this one you can actually find an answer. I kind of like the last one because everyone had a different answer and I um, like that I can put a lot more into it with like history. The sixth graders found a pattern of where Sir Math-a-Lot should sit by drawing a lot of round tables and counting off yes, no, yes, no. No, sorry. Yes. No. <laughs> yes, good for you. No. Uh, what we've been doing is kind of trial and error. Like we, we practice yes and no, like it said in the example, over and over and over again, and we're looking for a pattern. Well, I'm pretty sure like he shouldn't sit in an even number seat. The algebra kids came up with a little bit more sophisticated formula. The seventh graders came up with powers of two. 32, and then 64, and then whatever 64 times yeah. two is. <laughs> the first news chosen was two to the x power. So it was either two, four, eight, and we're gonna try 16 now to see if that keeps working. Modeling Monday offers so many challenges and opportunities for students to express themselves. I think one of the interesting things is just getting students together, having them work in groups, and talk about a problem that is not obvious from the get-go. We're like discussing, so it kind of helps our thinking. What's instrumental in all of this is being able to explain their solution, being able to explain their process and convey it to others in a convincing format. What I would do is I would still draw a circle, a model. Draw a picture and like figure out how to visualize it. We're just drawing out each table. There's 22 people sitting, then the 13th person. So we're still working on the graph, which is a big factor. And then I did have the student that came up with his own computer program to actually explain the process and go through those steps. If you input the number so, uh, of the amount of chairs that are inside of the room, let's say there's 24, 25 chairs and you press the solve button, so the knight should sit in the 19th ch chair. I think Modeling Monday is giving the kids the sense of, I can tackle a problem that I don't have a math strategy for, but I have a thinking strategy for. And that's what we're trying to bring back to our classrooms, is not just, here's, here are the rules for solving the math problem, because I don't have rules to solving problems in life. So we don't want to teach them just rules, we want to teach them to think. And I, I truly believe that that's what Modeling Monday is doing for our kids.